Hi guys, Colsey, and today I'm back with some more Touch Portal news. The team at Touch Portal are very committed to their work and uh, they are constantly updating Touch Portal to make it work better, to make more features uh, and to integrate it with more software. Now I mentioned this in one of my other videos that I made about Touch Portal. They were working on integration with XSplit and Streamlabs OBS. Well now those things are both available. Personally, I use Streamlabs OBS when I stream. So having that integration with Touchpool is really, really good. So that's what I wanna show you today. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through uh, my simple system that I set up, uh, which is what I use on my Touchpool to work with my Streamlabs OBS just so that you guys can see that now it is actually working with Streamlabs OBS. A little bit complicated setup because I had to use my camera instead of my webcam to film me because I have Streamlabs OBS open which uses my webcam and so it won't let me record with my webcam so I've had to use the camera. That's fine anyway, right. Okay, so what I've done, I am screen recording my phone. I will edit that into the screen so that you can see it alongside what I'm looking at on my desktop. Uh, as you can see on my desktop, you can see I have Streamlabs OBS open. This is what I use for streaming. This is my streaming scenes and stuff. So what I'm gonna show you is basically how I use my touch portal with Streamlabs OBS. And like I said, it does work with XSplit now and it does work with OBS Studio, which I showed you previously in another video. Also, if you're new to touch portal, this may be the first time you're hearing about it. If you wanna learn how to install it and set it all up, I have done two other videos on those. So I'll link those in the description and maybe put some sort of annotation up or something. Right now, we are on my Touchpool home screen. So this is where, this is my main screen where you can access all different types of apps. Obviously I've got uh, normal OBS, Photoshop, uh, Promo Pro, Vegas Pro, uh, GIMP, which is a image editing software if you didn't know that, and uh, Streamlabs OBS. So I'm gonna talk about Streamlabs OBS. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Streamlabs OBS. So this then loads up my Streamlabs OBS page, if you will. It's what I have lots, it's where I put my settings for Streamlabs OBS. So, um, because I only really use Streamlabs OBS for streaming, I have uh, live streaming, which starts the stream, and stops streaming, which stops the streaming. And then underneath that, I have all my scenes, and by clicking on those, it will change the scene to that scene. So right now I'm on the starting screen. If I change to game, that would be where the game is. I don't actually have a game set at the minute, but I can change from the, the game capture to the display capture, which opens up the display capture. I can then turn that off. These are toggles. So you press them on and you press them off. That's how it works, pretty simple. So that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, those two are there because uh, occasionally some games don't like to be captured by game capture and they perform better if you display capture them. So that's why I have those there as options. Okay, so then my next scene is the face cam, which now you can see I'm on the face cam, but I have a camera here because like I said, it wouldn't let me record the webcam whilst this is open, so it's fine. This is my webcam scene. Then I have a Be Right Back screen. Again, I'm accessing all of these just by using Touch Portal to change the scene. Uh, obviously this would change live on stream if I was live streaming. So that's my bureau rack, and then I have my end screen. So these these are like main things for me, being able to change the scenes. Uh, normally I use hotkeys on my keyboard to do that, but being able to have an actual separate device, which is my phone, running touch portal to do that is actually way easier, way simpler, way smoother. Okay, so the only other things I have which are useful for streaming for me personally um, is uh, controlling the audio uh, devices that I have. So I have desktop audio, which comes in, I have mic audio, and then I have both of them combined into everything basically. So at the moment, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner that all my audio sources are muted. So if I click unmute desktop, you'll see that now the desktop is unmuted. Now obviously there's no sound coming through the desktop at the minute because I'm not playing any sound through the computer, so I'll just mute that again. But if I unmute the microphone, which again is muted at the minute, you'll be able to see my, my voice being picked up on the microphone. So now I've unmuted that, you'll be able to see that it's going up and down as I'm speaking. So again, I can mute that. And when I'm starting the stream, I have all audio sources muted, and then I unmute them when I when I come into the stream. So when I'm on this starting screen, everything is muted. Then when I switch to say webcam, and I'm actually on the stream, I will unmute all devices, and then the stream will be able to hear me and hear whatever audio I have playing. That's how I like to do it. 
So that's just my personal, my personal preference there. So that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Um, the team over at Touchball are very, very committed to their app, to the Touchball system. They are constantly working to keep it updated to make sure it works. And I just have huge respect for them for doing that. Uh, it's a great thing to be able to offer. Like I said before in other videos, it is free. So if you do want to go check it out, um, you can check it out in my other videos. It explains where to download it, how to download it, and how to install it. It is free. There is a premium version, um, which just gives you a few more abilities. Uh, but you are perfectly capable of using the free version. Uh, there's nothing really that holds you back with that free version, to be honest. But by buying the premium version, you're showing that you support Touchball, which is never a bad thing to do. Because like I said, they work hard. They work very hard. And when stuff like OBS comes out with new updates, um, they obviously have to check that Touchball is still working and they haven't, in fact, you know, by OBS updating, they haven't, in fact, broken how Touchball will work. So they've always been very quick to make sure it's working. And if it's not working, find a solution to make it work again. So again, I just have huge respect for them for doing that. Again, if you want more information about how to set up and install Touchball, I've done two other videos. Like I said, they are in the description, so go check those out if you're interested. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was useful to some of you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.